so guys today as you can see it's all about ankara and we are at african fabric and designs located in Hallingham, nairobi we are about to have an amazing conversation with kate the founder of this amazing fashion house please stay here and enjoy the conversation for she lives i am abulatia imbukwa So, Kate, before we talk about this beautiful, beautiful work you do in your fashion house, yes. can you introduce yourself to your audience? Let them have a feeling of who Kate is. So, um, I'm Kate Mayeye Okaranime. Um, I'm a marketing major, so I love marketing and I love selling stuff. And I also have a design for fashion. I have a passion for fashion. Mm. Yeah. You yes. said Okaranime. 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 Is Okaranime Kenyan? No, it's Nigerian. That's my my marriage name. Wow. It's Uta, yes. I'm married to a Nigerian, but I'm Kenyan by birth. Kenyan by birth. Yes. Let's talk about what you do. Yes. This beautiful work. Yes. Uh, is this something you studied in school, or it's a gift that you were born with? Mm, I'd say a uh, gift and also experience. Because I used to love fashion since since I was a young kid. And I remember my mom used to have a fashion. My mom still has or used mm -hmm. to have mm -hmm. a fashion and design business. Yeah. So when she started um, with the fashion work and she used to bring in clothes from Gikomba, she used to open bills. Yeah. Then transitioned into having tailors and, and making and custom making clothes and stuff like that. So I used to have the biggest wardrobe of all my siblings. Like, I used to love clothes so much. So now, transitioning now into adulthood, every time you finish high school, everybody has to go and work at my mom's store. So that's where now you learn how to be confident, talking to clients, how to measure. And, and that's when you're like 18, 17, when you finish school, mm. uh, high school. So from there, I got the experience and I got the passion. And then now, when it came to going to school, I studied marketing management, like yeah. the Institute of Management. So for me, I was keen on getting a course that I could finish in a short while. And then when I started into the fashion and fashion and design business now, I, sorry, from the marketing business is now how I got into the fashion world. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it, it, it somehow they intertwined. Yes, 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 they married. So I combined my passion and uh, you know what I learned in school because I love selling stuff as well. So, so this was good for me. And now you bring out the point that when before you go to school, sh you should really identify what you want to do. Yeah. That maybe could tie into your gift, like yes. it has done. Yes. So you mm -hmm. can like like what happens yeah in the in the fashion industry and what I have seen, a lot of people are gifted, like high, highly talented. I'm not. Trust me, yeah. I'm not the cream de la cream. There's a lot of talented Kenyans. With this awesomeness. Yes, but what, what, doesn't, what sets me apart is yeah. I've learned the gift of marketing my work. Yeah. You know, I, I, I learned, like, when before even I, I, like, finally graduated from school, I've done, I worked with different establishments in just marketing, mm -hmm. okay? So from marketing different products, I yes. learned now how to tie the fashion of the fashion and tie it together with marketing to come up with, you know, a brand that stands out. So if the noise I'm making on social media, trust you me, there are people who are way more talented than I am. Wow. It's just that they're not as popular as I am. Yeah, so social media is also a powerful marketing tool. Yes, you have to learn to market in all ways that you can. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what inspires your designs? You have very unique designs. Okay. What really I go for in terms of designs and what really inspires me is I don't want to look like the next person. So before I design something for you, I have to look like what sets me apart. Like you can easily get this dress done by somebody else, but mm -hmm. what sets me apart, you know? So I have to look for the unique elements to add on to my design. So that's what normally makes me stand out from everybody else. Like for me, I'm so happy like this dress I'm wearing, I don't have to 
have a bra. Yes. You and know? you know, bras are very stressful yes. for women. Like, yes. nobody wants to be there trying, you know, just zip your dress or tie a string and you're good to go with your dress. So, I, I try to make dresses that are sexy and they give you that confidence. So yes. Now, you know, a bra, if you get the wrong fit with a good dress, the dress won't look nice. Yeah. So, I fit you with an inbuilt bra and you're good to go. And that's a very unique element. Yes. 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 So, your fabric. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of fabric in the market. Mm -hmm. So, how do, do you differentiate the real fabric from the fake? Okay. Now, there's no really any fake fabric. It just depends with the company or the brand or the, or the thread counts that you're looking for. So, for me, I've been in business for five years. So it's been a journey. I started with so sourcing fabric locally. I used to go to Kili and, and you know, check out different suppliers. Mm -hmm. So after a while, when I started, a year later, I came to the realization, like for me, what I normally do, before I do any marketing or go step outside the norm, I have yeah. to check what are my clients asking for? What do my clients need? So as I continued to market myself, I started getting queries from different places. And clients would say, mm, okay, this fabric, okay, it's good, but can I soak it in water? Can mm -hmm. I machine wash? And yeah. you know, that with Ankara is quite difficult yes. to get. So mm. with time, I started learning my different fabrics, started importing from different countries, and, and learning the thread counts of the fabric, the type of uh, waxing that they have. Yeah. So there's a difference between Ankara and Kitenge. And what we have locally is Kitenge. Kitenge. So a lot of Kitenge is in the market disguised, disguised as Ankara, Ankara because yeah. Kitenge has a lower thread count than an Ankara fabric. And even the wax technique for uh, Kitenge and Ankara are completely different. So once you study your market, then you know what you want. Literally all my fabric is imported. All the Ankara fabric are imported to the country. But what I'm looking at into the future is to patent my own design when yeah. I start printing my own work. So that's my goal in the future. A beautiful goal. You have very unique designs made from very quality fabric. Such a combination is not easy to find in the market. How would you rate your market? Is it high end or the middle class is also accommodated? Normally, mm, I design for literally every budget. Now, the thing is, you have to be flexible with what you want within your budget. Yeah. You cannot want a hundred thousand dress, a hundred thousand Kenya shillings dress. For a price of 10,000, it doesn't work. It doesn't. <laughs> because what has to go into a dress for that value is completely different for a dress that has to go for a value of 10,000. Now, normally, there's Lipa Napolepo option. Like, you can come a month. Like, I have brides who come at the beginning of the year, and their dress is in December. So every month, they send me a kakiru, you know? So that way, at the end of the year, you finish by buying the dress that you dreamed of. But that's the thing that Kenyans don't understand. Everybody wants to buy something when last I need it. Last minute. Yeah, last <laughs> minute. So when you leave things to last minute and you don't have a flexible budget or a flexible mindset, then you're frustrated. So for me, I definitely tailor for every budget, but mostly middle class and high end. But at different intervals within the year, I have clearance sales. Like I make a lot of ready-made outfits that I, I sell at a subsidized price. So... I mean, it depends with what you want. Literally, anything you I do in this shop is beautiful, and it stands out, and it's unique either mm -hmm. way. No dress that you leave here from this shop, people will not ask you where did you get that dress, a hundred percent. So that that's what I normally aim for. My dresses have to go out there and sell themselves. So I make sure, irrespective of your budget, mm -hmm. when you leave here, it's an outfit that sells itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. If you're doing, you're doing it from scratch for somebody, how much should you charge? 10,000 only. 10,000? Yeah. So I have different fancy unique ones, like this goes for 6,500 and I have others for 5,000. So it just depends, you know. Flex your budget. <laughs> Flex your budget is yeah. the word. And how would you rate the fashion industry in Kenya, especially in the COVID period? What I've seen, I've seen a lot of designers up their game. I've seen designers improve in their aesthetics. They're mm -hmm. really trying, but the problem is you still yeah. have the mentality of let me copy what African fabric is doing. That okay. If African fabric is doing this, let me do it and give you at a cheaper price. And that's the stupidity that doesn't make the industry grow. 
I really hate that. Yeah. So I pray that we'll keep reinventing ourselves. I've seen a lot of new designers come up and people with different aesthetics and the industry is really coming up, you know. Like for me, you know, I travel. I travel sometimes to source for fabric or I travel because I'm going to meet my in-laws and things like that and traveling to meet family. And you say you're a Kenyan designer and I say, Kenyans, mm -hmm. they do design. They don't design anything. <laughs> So, wow. <laughs> so literally we're not known for design. Yeah. I don't know. The ones who were there before us, like in Akiko Romeo and, and the rest, they've done their thing, but the market has changed and our name is not being remembered out there. We're not standing out enough. So you go outside and people ask you, I Kenyans, do they know anything about design? And I've had this conversation with a couple of people and they're like, No, every time I introduce myself I say I'm a Kenyan fashion designer, they say, mm, what designs do Kenyans know? And you're pushed to the side. Wow. Because they don't take you seriously. So we have to do better. We have to definitely stand out. We have to shake this market more. Create, you know, like normally what you see on the internet, especially if you're studying fashion trends, you'll see a South African or a Nigerian start starting a trend, and then you see the rest of different Africa. Because I follow a lot of designers. So yeah. I see it, the trend will start in Nigeria and follow through all the way to South Africa and, and absorb into different African designers. And you'll see a trend starting from South Africa and absorbing up the chain. But I haven't seen a trend starting in East Africa and absorbing into the chain. So I know we, we still have to come up with our own aesthetic as East Africans and push the market. I mean, film industry, we're doing better. I think we're pretty well known in the film industry than, and I, than we could be known. Yeah, like uh, our films are doing well and stuff like that and and create and and definitely uh, the sports aspect mm -hmm. but when it comes to the creative industry we're still struggling even from the artists and the same thing i go to, to like different countries and you say you hey, put some kenyan music they ask you kenyan do they have nice music <laughs> <laughs> apart from saudi soul and, and you know they know the best the the most uh, you know trending ones but it's us kenyans to also push the narrative like let me show you what tanzanians do when a celebrity wears, most of the celebrities literally were made in Tanzania. Wow. Very few will be flaunting Gucci and, you know, when they're doing a proper shoot or launching a product or doing anything on the red carpet, everyone is wearing made in Tanzania. But what are Kenyans doing? The same thing I'm seeing in Ugandans. People wear made in Uganda. But Kenyans, what do we do? We want to go get things for Gucci. from China, Turkey. We're not channeling not or harnessing the local design industry. You see, the same way we don't reshare, like when an artist releases music and they post on their social media pages, it's as easy as going sharing. Like, you don't know who's following this artist, but they're not really following. So push the creative industry. We have a collective as Kenyans to push our creative industry for people to take notice of us. Like you see her, Miss Amobeto will wear a dress and a Kenyan, will, a Kenyan will repost that on their dress. But I will make a very unique dress and post it on my page, but they wouldn't share it on their yeah. page. So does it make sense? No, it we doesn't. Have, let me tell you a, a funny story. There's these pages on Instagram, right, that they, they say they're Kenyan wedding, Kenyan this, Kenyan this. But when you look at those pages, before you spot a Kenyan work is one in ten, then you're not showing Kenyans. You're showing other designers. So yeah. how will you push the creative industry in Kenya as a collective? You don't expect me to pay you for ads because you're a Kenyan blogger, but you rarely post Kenyan work. So how does that go? You know, it's very annoying. We go through all this, but it's a collective. Everybody has to pull their weight. If you're into marketing or into, into blogging and into all these things, feature more Kenyan work. Feature more Kenyan artists. Yeah. Some of us might be handling the creative aspect, but we're not really good in the management and the marketing aspect, then we need the other, you know, call us, push us, call us for interviews, you know, do all this work. Then it makes sense. Definitely, buy Kenya, build Kenya. Yes, like, you, let me tell you, I, I did a gig with Amarula about three years ago, and how I was actually put on the map to even be chosen for that, because I was just two years in business then, and somebody who's a Kenyan writes for a South African magazine so that I addressed a Nigerian celebrity, asked for an interview, put me on page six in South Africa. It opened doors for me and that's what you do. If you are a Kenyan in power or a Kenyan in a position to push other Kenyan brands, please do. Feature us. 
you're a Kenyan, you're an intern at Vogue Italia. Why don't you say, hey, there's a Kenyan jewelry designer. There's a Kenyan who is doing amazing stuff. There's a Kenyan artist who's pushing this agenda in Kenya. Push us. Yeah. Open doors for us. It's a Kenyan collective. If you don't push us, who will? So that's it. <laughs> Yes, yes, it's very powerful. Yeah. Very powerful. Actually, it's so disappointing that, as you have said, uh, if you check, I as mean, in it's sad. If you check, like page, pages online, if you want to check anything made in Nigeria, you'll check Bella Niger weddings, right? If you want to check Nigerian weddings, you can actually type Nigerian weddings. There's a page that literally features Nigerian weddings, from weddings abroad to the weddings that are local. All Nigerian weddings. Do you see them featuring any other country? No. Nigerians. Look at a Kenyan page. Tanzania, Tanzania, Rwanda. Nigeria, 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 UK, US, Kenya. Does it make sense? It doesn't. Why are you opening all these pages and not featuring the pages that are supposed to be there? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't sense. make sense. Before we get posted by those pages, we've done something that has really... Like for me, I'm more posted by Nigerian pages and reposted by other Nigerian blogs than the Kenyan pages. So what does that show you? What are we fighting? You're not pushing the Kenyan agenda. So we have to push ourselves to be popular outside before here. That's why, you see, somebody like Majibo, she identifies as who? A South African. She dumped us. Why? Because we don't support her. You are not her reposting her yeah. work, but her work is being reposted by other, other, other countries. So who do you go to? Who is doing, who is doing your work? So it is a collective. That's why it's difficult. And you'll see other, other like, there's a lot, I see a lot. There's a, actually, I saw on a stylist page, one page that does really creative work. Closed. Is it the beginning of this year? Or at the end of last year, they closed their business. But they do very creative work. You know, it could be either from a marketing stand, standpoint, you as a creative get tired to push your work and you're seeing it staying back. It's not selling. So if you don't have to, if you don't restructure and strategize, it's very hard for you to push out. So it needs a lot of thinking. You can't be, you think about, like for me, you think about designs this week, next week, no sales. So you're looking at yourself like, oh man, you start doubting yourself. You start, you know, if you think, if you keep thinking about what you can't do or what hasn't worked right, then you can't grow. So you have to change your mindset. Yes. What else can you do? How can you make your work? Even if it's not sell, can you lease it? You know? Can you do something else that can change your, you know, whatever field you're in? And, and that's basically it. Especially with the pandemic, if you don't think outside the box. Like for me, I remember when the pandemic started, I closed the whole of April last year. Because I was like, I just found out I was pregnant and I have stuff. And March, basically the rest, the, like mid-March towards the end, the entire time I used to, I went into my pocket to give my tailors off to make some ready-to-wear designs. Why? Because I am responsible for them. If yeah. they don't work, they don't eat. So after digging into my pocket for a while, I said, April, we can't do this. So I, I shut down. And um, I thank God, my consistency in posting and posting and posting. I kept posting, even if I knew they were not going to buy. Post a nice, unique design. And funny enough, I was still making sales even with the pandemic. So you have to keep going. Some days are hard, but you have to keep posting, keep sharing. Then I came up with another concept because I shop had open next to where I was. And I came up with another concept of why don't I do photo shoots in this space? Because I mean, I have these accessories that I, I have that I use in my dresses where a lot of tailors say they, they don't know where to get the finishing. Oh, who's selling feathers, who's selling fringe, who's selling this, you know, all these accessories that add on to a dress. Yeah. So I, I, because I used to get it for myself and I had in, a, in surplus, I decided to start selling them. So I opened tailoring accessories, which is part of the same business. And then also stepped out of my bo of the box to create now the photo shoot space. Like you see here, I, you come, I style you, mm. I style your three looks, photography and makeup and charge you 25,000. So you have got to wear the birthday dress that you wanted to wear. 
you've got the makeup that you wanted and you've got the shoots that you wanted and you've created a memory for yourself in a beautiful space with whichever clothes you wanted to wear because a lot of people say oh the clothes is expensive is this for my birthday where will i wear again but you can always rewear your clothes i yeah. don't know what is wrong with people. me i can't spend this dress i wear it every week i must wear it if it's a new dress i wear it until i get tired of it so don't tell me where am i going to take the dress you know i don't understand why kenya speak like that but if you want a photo shoot package you can get it here so that's how you venture out like i partner with i have a photographer i partner with that does comes to do the photo shoot i work with different makeup artists so you're creating an employment within a business that you wanted to expand yeah mm -hmm. and what is that very beautiful thing you love about the fashion industry just creating something from scratch i love creating from zero like seeing just a fabric on the shelf and then you transform form it into an output where somebody goes like how did you think of this yeah and, that, and that's what really i like because it sets you apart from everybody else and and for me, seeing something from scratch, growing into something beautiful, is what I live for. Okay. Yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, when you were talking when you were talking before that you are looking forward into expanding this business and having your own brand. Yeah, not even brand. My own fabric. Your own fabric. Yes. In future, because uh, what I'm working on now is patenting, patenting my sketches or the designs that I want to print. And you have to patent it locally and patent, patent it internationally. Especially if you want to produce abroad, you have to patent it, it patent internationally. Or even if you patent it here. And mm -hmm. with the kind of following I have, and I post it on my page, and somebody decides to take my sketch to China and print it out, you're going to pay me. I'll follow you. <laughs> so for that, you have to secure the base. You have to secure the base of the in of the of what you want to do before now venturing out into you know mm -hmm. market sphere. So for sure, I want to create my own prints. And as as we wind up, what would you tell that fashion designer who is coming up and is maybe scared of? Why that? are you scared? What is scaring <laughs> you? You cannot start a, an investment having second thoughts just decide and do it decide and start and never stop keep going keep reinventing yourself keep doing you the thing is they start and they look at african fabric and say i want to be like that i didn't start here i didn't start here <laughs> i have toiled yeah i used to let me tell you one thing when i started i didn't i didn't start popular i started with my nobody knows me nobody who knows this brand nobody knew who kate was so I started with, my agenda was to push African fabric and designs, Kenya. Like, this is a page where anything African goes. So that's when I started. That's, know what, what your brand is. So my brand started as, I wanted to sell fabrics first. See, African fabrics is first. So I wanted to bring as much Africanness into, into Kenya as possible. Then from African fabrics, then I went into design. So for Two three years when I two three months when I started I didn't have a fundi I was just literally selling fabric online so within the three months I'd gotten as much connection as I wanted I was already shipping fabric to South Africa to Egypt before I started tailoring before tailoring okay so it was this fabric that I was interested in so when I pushed fabric for a while I started bringing in the tailors started training the tailors we would start we started the Kenyan way and I'm like no. I don't like it. So I started buying clothes from Nigeria and taking them apart to see how are they creating A, B, C, D. How I used to spend money <laughs> just to see, to learn, because I'm self-taught. So I didn't know. I was like, I love the feet of this, but how are they achieving it? So I used to buy clothes from other designers in Nigeria, break them apart, and see what has been done on the inside, what is on the outside. And would learn that every day with my tailors. So from there now, I started growing, started learning, started reinventing myself. For one and a half years, I would make clothes and, and, and you know, you see what is in the market and you're like, but I make better clothes. Why is my work not, you know, why am I not getting these gigs? W what is this that this person is wearing? I can do better. But when you're starting, you don't have the capacity to start, you know, going out and meeting stylists and say, hey, I want to dress so and so. No. 
you have to let your work speak for itself. Yeah. Let them come to you. I remember so many times my spouse used to say, hey, Kate, this person doesn't know how to dress. Go and approach ABC. I'm like, no, that's not how you do. Let them come to you. When they come to you, then it is, you have the say so. You decide mm -hmm. whether you want to partner at their terms or they have to partner now on your terms because your work has sold itself. Yeah. As opposed to having to pay somebody to do your job. Marketing can be so many different ways. That is free. Yeah? So if you want to venture out, be as original as possible. Be consistent as much as you can. Because consistency and pushing your work is what will make you stand out. Yeah. As opposed, because when you're starting as a young designer, you don't have the budget to go and pay who to wear your dress. You don't have the budget to pay an artist to go and market for you. You're an influencer. Okay? So you might be lucky to know them on a personal level, but how many times will they push your work? They're not pushing your agenda. It is you. Yeah. So you have to create the brand that you want to sell. You have to create the niche for your market. And always learn on the job. Listen to your clients. What, listen to what they want, not what they are telling you to do. <laughs> you understand? There's a difference. Because so many times I get clients, I'll tell you, oh, why don't you do this, why don't you do this? But am I ready for it? No. Take your time, because it took me time. Every time, I, I get, get so many opinions, everybody telling you what you should be doing with your brand. Oh, come and tell you, oh, so you come African fabric. But are you African fabric? Are you Kate? Do you know where I'm pushing my brand? No, you don't. Don't listen to them. Who are you as a brand? Build your brand and, and where you want to go. Opinions are welcome, but not everything has to be absorbed. Discard, discard all those that don't make sense. No sentiments, facts. Speak with facts. And then that's it. So for me, like, I had to strive. I did one, I, I did, I think, six to eight months. And then somebody who was my client referred me to Angela Okori. Then I did Angela's outfits, and she really loved them. And she's an Hollywood star. Till today, sometimes when I post on my page, she's like, hey, I want that outfit. Let me send you my measurements. How? We started a rapport from like a small business, and yeah. she's seen me grow to this business. She gets. So it's growth. Sometimes you might be lucky you get a connect. When you get that connect, you utilize it to the max. Yes. Don't go and do something idiocre. Yeah. <laughs> you get. So uh, number one, build your brand. Number two, be consistent. Number three, listen and watch out for opportunities and the right opportunities, not just any opportunity, you get? Yes. Yeah. Not somebody telling you, make me an outfit, and then when you look at the influencer page, they don't tag whoever has dressed them. Just know you wouldn't be tagged as well, and you've done a free outfit. So that's not a good opportunity. It's not. Separate <laughs> the good ones from, from the ones the that don't make sense. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So for if you're young, uh, if you're starting out, build your, focus on what, you, what do you want to build? What do you really want to build? And then focus on that, push on that and grow. And that's, that's what I did. Th and that's what has, has made me stand out. And I keep elevating my craft. What I made last week and what I make this week is not the same thing. We have changed something. Yeah? Very powerful. <laughs> <laughs> so you say that your background is marketing. You studied marketing. Yeah. And I understand it marries with what you do right now. Mm -hmm. Did you perhaps practice marketing before now you got into fashion? Yes. So mm -hmm. even before, like before I graduated um, university, uh, college, I used to do, I would sign into a modeling agency. So the agency was called Diamonds and Pearls, and we used to do experiential marketing as such. We were hostesses, models like, but towards more towards pushing products so, so it was more of an experience for giving clients so like when like when samsung launched into the country well, when they launched the galaxy i was one of the girls that we used to wear short shorts in the malls and selling and teaching people about the phone so by the time i was finishing i was already i had already gotten a job with kids 100 so i worked in the marketing department for like three months quit <laughs> <laughs> I realized, I mean, I really don't want to be employed. And then from there, I stayed home for a while. Then I went and worked for Priya Chana Communications. So Priya was 
doing a lot of PR and also offering social media marketing and, and stuff like that. So from there actually is when I learned the structure of being in business, in the marketing business. So I left Priya I like was it eight months after or six months after and started my own business with my a friend of mine. So the first gig I did was I came up with a a, a concept for one FM. Uh, and they wanted concepts for events. So I came up with a whole concept and we executed it. And I got paid and I was like, oh, so I can actually do this. And I got my confidence and a friend of mine when in uh, high uh, college, we, we partnered together and started Demaya Media. So Demaya Media used to offer social media marketing, we used to offer event consultancy, and we used to offer hostesses for events. And actually through getting hostesses for events, we started packaging as getting dresses as well. So dresses, I would get the orders for outfits for each job that we get and take it to my mom's store to make it for me. And then I saw there's so much profit here. What am I waiting for? <laughs> so I talked to my spouse and he invested in, in the proposal that I had. I started in a very small shop and, and grew it to African fabric. But also in the digital marketing space, we're really thriving. Before now, because before I had my child, oh my God, we used to make, <sighs> to my media did well. <laughs> but now when you start having children and we're both partners and when we're growing and, and expanding in whatever we wanted to do separately from the my media, it's slowly fizzled out. Yeah, but definitely I have a good experience in marketing. I've worked in different fields from selling ad, ad space it's cute. <laughs> and, you know, to selling packages, I did PR with, uh, from Priya Chan, I learned how to do PR, you know. So for me, all these interviews, thank God, I keep pushing the, the marketing together and I'm getting more. Because <laughs> PR is important. You know? Yeah. Non-paid advertising that goes to different medias is really crucial. Very crucial. Very Thank you so much, Kate. Thank you. Thank you for coming and, and thank you for ambushing me. You know, today I was <laughs> supposed to be chilled in the house, but I'm here. <laughs> thank you for this beautiful work that yeah, you're doing welcome. here. You're and I hope the Kenyans have had them start supporting. Yeah, support us. Work. Before you share, Mr. Mobeto, think have I gone to African Fabric and shared their work? Because I think we do better. Come on. Oh Def God. look at this. Before before you sh <laughs> before you share like this, every time yeah. like I normally say this, before you share work from an international aspect, like before I share a TikTok video, I'll first share the Kenyan one. Like whether it's an artist that has done music. Like every Sundays I'm on my page, like listening to I go to YouTube on Sunday because Sundays is rest, I go to YouTube, look out at you know when Kenyan music, the new Kenyan music, and you play it, and the ones are like, I post videos on my page, because we have to push the Kenyan creative scene. Yeah. It starts with you. Before you edit the song that you want for to post on your page, so you put a Kenyan music. It's easy, the same way you can download, download Kenyan music. Pick for Kenyan music, yeah. you know, buy Mpasho or, or Mdundo, and you know, buy Kenyan stuff. Yeah. Like for me, I, I would literally wear Kenyan from head to toe. There are days where I, weeks that I, I can literally look at my wardrobe and say, this, this sandals, this entire collection of sandals, all made in Kenya. Not just Maasai sandals. There's other designers that are Kenyan that are actually making sandals, jewelry, the Kenyan jewelers, instead of buying China. This, as in, literally Kenyans are talented, 100%. It's just us to appreciate it. Let's yeah. appreciate what is made in Kenya and, and we'll go for as a, as a collective. Great. Mm -hmm. See, too, the music. Yeah. There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> buy Kenya, build Kenya, definitely. Yeah. So the goal is buy Kenya, build Kenya. I hope you're inspired by Kate's story and you definitely reach out to her store and get this amazing fabric, amazing unique designs that will light your wardrobe <laughs> and make you look fabulous. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. This is Chili, it's brought to you by me, Abulatza Mbukwa. <laughs>